This week in Rooted, we journeyed into the unknown. Yeah. Ooh, I'm sorry, parents. I immediately regret that I did that to you. That song's probably way overplayed. Speaking of overplayed, I'm sure we all understand that experience of having something that the more we get to know it, the more time we spend with it, the less we want to be around it. Like an overplayed song that every time it comes on, you just want to scream. And then there are those things that no matter how much we're around them, we just can't seem to get enough of them. For me, one of these things is superheroes and Marvel stuff. Anyone who knows me knows I love this stuff. I've got way too much of it all over the place in my office. And on top of loving superhero stuff because they inspire me and entertain me, uh, there's also a person in my life that no matter how much time I spend around, my wife Claire, uh, I always want to spend more time with her. I just never get tired of her and I always want to know her better and spend more time with her. Aww. We all have those things, hopefully, that we just can't get enough of. We just love them, but they're different for all of us. Here's the thing though, God is unique. Why? Well, he's unique because for all of us, he is so great, so majestic, so mysterious, that no matter how much time we spend getting to know God, we should find ourselves only desiring more and more of him as we go. Now, we might know nothing about God if he hadn't revealed himself, but thankfully he has revealed himself to us. And he's done this in a few key ways. We learned this week that God reveals himself primarily through the creation, second, through the scriptures, and lastly, through the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the deepest revelation of who God is. God become man. Another surprise reveal. But that's sort of confusing, isn't it? How can the immortal, eternal, amazing God become something as, as finite and mortal as a man? And by the way, how can God be this one being but three persons, the whole Trinity concept, right? This is part of the mystery of God. He's really, really big and frankly, strange and difficult to understand. These puzzles are actually some of the greatest and most mind-bending puzzles you can ever ponder. But here's the thing about God. He's not just a logic puzzle, and he's revealed these things to us about himself because it helps us to relate to him, not because he wants us to be confused. But the important point about these big puzzles about God is this. If you are worshiping a God that you can fully wrap your mind around, you understand everything about him and it just makes perfect sense, you can be pretty sure that you're worshiping an idol because the real God is so vast and big no matter how much you know about him, there should always be more to learn. Much bigger than that. Now, of course God is mysterious, but ultimately we're asking who is God, right? What do we know about God? What is clear? Well, this much is clear. God is the creator. If it's not God, then everything else, things visible and invisible, in heaven, on earth, or anywhere else, if it's not God, God made it. I made this for you! But wait a second, I think we all know that God is good. And if God is good and he created all this stuff, that must mean he created it good. In fact, the Bible tells us just that. So then, how come in our experience everything isn't good? What's going on here? Well, the Bible tells us something else about God, which is that he made us kingly creatures, creatures that were able to choose whether we would rule according to his way or whether we would choose to go our own way, become our own gods. And unfortunately, we chose the latter, and that really messed things up in God's creation. Man, when left to his own devices, will descend into chaos and evil. But luckily, the story doesn't end there. We are also told that God himself became a man in Jesus and did what was necessary on the cross for us to be healed, reconciled to him, and if we choose him, we can have eternal life with him and we can know that one day he will make all things new. Now everything is new. So God has offered us a choice again. Do we wanna live in slavery to sin and death? Or do we wanna live in the freedom that God offers us in Jesus? If the latter, we just have to remember A, B, C. A, admit that we're sinners and that we need God's salvation. B, 
believe the good news of Jesus. And last, C, commit to Jesus and to living his way. It really is that simple. And if you do those things, you can begin to live truly free. What will you do without freedom? But learning to live free means learning a new way of life. So how do we hear from God? How can he teach and guide us along the way? Well, that's what we're talking about this week. Enjoy the journey.